Good evening, dear ladies. I would like to stop with Rota Shem Shagia Mashiach to come with Rabbi Menu Amen. Shagia Mada Sarelia and Abilia Otish Bilia Obledi Mamad Moshech Ben Levi Delia Nevi Zachur Latov. Amen. Can I ratzon? I would like to tell you something that I saw, you know, in a Chabad newsletter, and it was last week when it was Shabbat Parah, and at the back of the newsletter. There was uh, something written about Holland and Rabbi Jacobs. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. And it's written over there that in the parliament in Holland, there is a suggestion for a law that will not allow Jewish shchita, yeah, that yeah, will yeah, stop the true. Jewish shchita. And more than that, this is one, but the second thing is, it says, you will kill and then also you're going to inherit someone. It, they told him that uh, he, 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 he teaches Jewish children Judaism. So they came to him from the uh, education department and they said there are not enough Jewish children. That's why you cannot continue holding the cheder. You know, cheder is a, uh, yeah. that you, you will not continue to teach Jewish children. So at this he said, Mazar, he told them, but it's uh, absurd because because of the Holocaust, there's not enough Jewish children in Holland because most of them were killed in the Holocaust. So he says, it's ridiculous to even say that. But I want you to just to pay, this is now, and this is a developed country in Europe. It's not, it's I'm not talking about... Now, yes, now. yes, that's what I'm telling you. And the Shechita is... That's what I'm telling you now in Holland. It's, that, what I'm trying to say is, it's like a domino effect. You know what a domino effect is? When you put one next to another, and just you, put, you push one down, and all that start to go down like a, it's a, a, a sharsheret. Yes. Like it's the same thing, and this is happening right now. It's the same, and it doesn't matter how how much knowledge we have, because today science knows that the shechita, the Jewish slaughtering of animals, is the most merciful of them all. This is by science. It's not only the Jewish people that say that, but science also, if they have um, research that shows that the Jewish slaughtering of animals, Shechita Yehudit, is the most merciful of all. The animal does not feel anything. But this is also by science. It's not only our saying that we say that, but also there was research by scientists that proves that this is the most human uh, a thing that can happen, that we can do in order to slaughter a, an animal. And this is a very de developed country, it's not one of the third world countries, and it's, you won't say it's a Muslim country, it's Holland. Holland. But this is, a, this is a newsletter that was published last week on Shabbat Parah from Chabad. So I was shocked to see, look how history repeats itself. It does not matter how much we know and how much knowledge we have, still we, we are I mean, walking behind. We have. It doesn't matter. <coughs> okay. No, I just want to tell you that I live by myself. That in California, it's just some group of people that are saying that Brit Mila should not be allowed. San Francisco. Yes. Yeah, my mom told me that one of the rabies in the Kiryat Malachi came and gave them lecture said uh, all the Jews who have relatives in America tell them to come because it's no future for Jewish people in Israel. He gave Listen, dear women, there's no future anywhere for the yeah. Jewish people except for the land of Israel. That's what he said. That, yeah. sh that should be clear to all of us. You know, they found, I don't need to interrupt you, but with Mubashkin, they found, I mean, I know that all of you know this, you must know this by now, they found out that he was framed. The prosecutor was in on it, they and, and his attorneys presented the proof, and nobody listened. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But I wanted to tell you, you see that history repeats, history repeats itself, dear women. It doesn't matter what we do, it it's women, it's very important. Listen. It's written, Tzion v'mishpat tipadeh. In the prophet Ishayahu it's written that Tzion which means the land of Israel, the Jewish people are going to be free by judgment. 
So, but we can change it. I already told you. It depends on us. We can change it. We should. We need to have that. We have to not, to, to have the knowledge that Hashem is with us everywhere. We need to do to do what we need to do from but, but what Hashem gave us to do. The mitzvot and the good deeds. We have the commandments and the, we have to do it. There's no other way in order that Mashiach will come with mercy. There's no other way. Otherwise, it will come, God forbid, with judgment. We can think whatever we want, but, you know, reality shows what's going on in the world. It's not something that is not going on, that something that we made up. But reality shows the mitzvot, shows what's happened, what happens in the world. And we can see, Shalom Edam Etzorot, that history repeats itself. And that is in the country that Anne Frank was, uh, you know. Can. But meanwhile, עוד מעט אני אחזור על זה בסוף. שרוצים לאסור שחיטה יהודית, לעצור את זה בהולנד, וגם את החדר שהרב עשה רוצים להפסיק. אוקיי, let's start with חודש ניסן with the month of the miracles, בעזרת השם. We have a few laws regarding the month of ניסן. First of all, by שולחן ערוך, we are not allowed on the whole month of ניסן. From the beginning of the month of Nisan till the end of the month of Nisan, we do not say Tachanun. Dear women, it's written like this. Bechmeshach kol yemot chodesh Nisan, ein omrim Tachanun. B'tfilat shacharit u'mincha, ein omrim avarachamim. In the morning blessings and also in the afternoon, mincha and shacharit, we do not say avarachamim. You should tell also to your husbands. ובמוסף של שבת, ואין אומרים במנחה צדקתך צדק לעולם, אלא אומרים יהי רצון. You will see in, in, the, in the סידור, you are not allowed to say that. Why? Because all of this month is considered a month of miracles. The 12 first days of the month is the time when the presidents, you know, in חומש במדבר, in the fourth חומש, חומש במדבר, you remember that when they celebrated the Mishkan, the sanctuary, when they celebrated it, then each president came to the Kohen and the, he brought, in, for the honor of the Mishkan, he brought the sacrifices. So each day there was one president from each one of the tribes who came forward. So those 12 days are, 12, are days of celebration. And then we have the 13th day, I'm going to speak in a few minutes about each one of them. The 13th day and the 14th day is Pesach, it's Korban Pesach, it's already Pesach. Then we have 10 days of Pesach almost, and which, which what is left of the, of the month is almost nothing. That's why the whole month is considered as a month of miracles, and you are not allowed to say Tachanun in the month of Nisan. The Rosh Chodesh Nisan starts on Tuesday, which means Monday, and next lesson is Rosh Chodesh. We will have the lesson on Rosh Chodesh. Exactly, Erev Rosh Chodesh, next lesson before uh, Pesach, we're going to have next lesson, it will be Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It won't be next Monday, because next Monday it will be the Zrat Hashem, uh, I'm going to speak about Pesach, all the laws about Pesach. But we're going to have Sudat Amenim, the meal of Amenim, we're going to have between Pesach and Shavuot, Bli Neder. And then I always have a suggestion, maybe we should do it in the shul, we'll celebrate over here, we'll order catering, and Bezrat Hashem will do the Amenim Suda over here. And Bezrat Hashem, I hope that a lot of women will come, and everybody will have the schut to participate in it, Bezrat Hashem. Maybe not before announcement. Yeah, I will, Bezrat Hashem, we'll see. Once, a lesson before we finish everything, I will tell you that's... We're going to have this okay. And you and must be demet anital. We do not say hesped. You know what hesped is? That we speak about a person that passed away. We do not say that on the month of Nisan. Kevan sherubo me'avei amim tovim. Which means most of it is, is uh, it called high holidays. That's why we are not allowed to do mispad. I remember that so a woman asked me if videos? you have to go to the grave. Yes. So there are a lot of minhagim mean, about this, that most of the people do not even go to the grave on the month of Nisan. But it says over here 
This is a COVID halachot lepesa. It says that if you do go, if you because there is a permission by three uh, uh, dinim that there is a permission to go. If you go, you are not allowed to say the usual things. Only to read the healing. Okay, that's the only thing. But usually on the month of Nisan, you don't even go to the grave. Month of Adar is something else. I'm talking about the month of Nisan. People are allowed to go on the grave. Okay. Because it's a yes. But this, but this is a month that all of it is only is is high holidays like all the month. Okay, from the because. On the first of Nisan, we celebrated the Mishkan. The Hanukkah Tabayit Shalom Mishkan. It was on the first of Nisan. That's why the whole month, including Pesach, but we're going to speak about it more. I just want to give you a few points. Then the second thing that I would like to tell you, on the month of Nisan, first of all, this Shabbat is Shabbat Mevarchim, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. This is called Shabbat HaChodesh. The parasha of this week that you're going to read, because it's a leap year, usually you see every year, every, every year we read parasha Tazriya Metzora together. But this year, leprosy, Tazriya Metzora, we'll read each one of them separately because it's a leap year. So this Shabbat we read from Chumash Vaikra, parasha Tazriya. And if you, you can go to the online and you can find there, I gave you lessons about Parashat Azriya. You can look there and see the lessons, Parashat Azriya. And this Shabbat is called Shabbat HaChodesh. And Bezrat Hashem, this Shabbat, please read the whole to heal him together. If you can, read it on your own. If you can't, just, you know, divide it. Even from now, divide it. Talk to a few friends to read from chapter to chapter, and then on Shabbat, Bezrat Hashem, you'll finish the whole Tehillim. It's a big, it's a big schut, it's a big merit to read on Shabbat Mevarchim. Shabbat Mevarchim, to read the whole Tehillim. So maybe separate it between yourselves. Okay, but if you, if you don't come and you're alone, you can separate between your friends, okay? And then you have the whole to read the whole Tehillim. Now, excellent, but the ones that don't, I'm giving you a tip. Excellent. Even five books, it's no less. Dear women, Banot, it's written, which means that a human being is like a tree. It's written in Tumash Dvarim, chapter 20. I gave you in your hands Birkat Ilanot. Ilanot is trees. Birkat Ilanot is trees. You see over here, Birkat Ilanot is the blessing of the trees. Shh, girls, that you'll understand. Ki Adam et Sadeh. It's written in Chumash Dvarim. Ki Adam et Sadeh. A human being is considered as a tree, okay? I would like to explain to you. It's a, one of the laws of the Nisan is on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We should bless Birkata Ilanot. You have the blessing in your hands. The blessing itself is, look at the first page. It's written one over here. I translated it to English over here. This is the blessing itself. All of the additions, in most Sidurim you don't have it, only in the Sephardic Sidurim and in the Hasidic Sidurim you have the, the addition. The addition is the Irat Sonsh, it's very important, I'll explain it. You see over here, blessed are you Hashem, our God, King of the Universe, who has caused, uh, who has caused uh, nothing to be lacking in His universe and has created in it godly creatures and godly trees uh, were with to bring delight to mankind. This is the blessing, okay? All the other things that you see from the Yehiratzon, L'Shem Yichud Kedusha Berichu, and the Yehiratzon, everything, is an addition on the other side. You see it's on both sides, okay? It's an addition, and I will explain why there is an addition, why it's so important. But first of all, I'm going to give you the laws of Birkat Ilanot. It's very important. When we should start? Rosh Chodesh Nisan. You, you need to find two trees 
Okay, that you know, at the beginning of flowers, trees of fruit, two trees of fruit. It has to be trees of fruit, not, not trees that don't have fruit on them. Two trees of fruit, and then you bless Birkate Ilanot. Just a minute. Just a we have to buy fruit from the small or we have to Again, listen very, shh, dear women, no. Dear women, listen again. You have to go outside. You know, it says it's better. Yalkut Yosef says, Arab Obadi Yosef says, it's better to go out of town to see the fruit. But if you can, it's okay to go to a garden, okay? Even for your neighbor's garden or your garden. If you have trees with fruit, that the fruit, the blossom starts, you can see, you know, a small flowers on the trees. You have to have to see two trees, so you can point out two trees, only trees of fruit. Write it down that you will remember only trees of fruit, not trees that do not have fruit. It has to be two trees, okay? If it's the same fruit, it's good. If it's two different, like an apple and a pear, it's excellent, okay? Two different fruits, it's okay, but you have to have two trees. The best thing is to bless on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, okay? The best thing is to bless on... The, it says that it's good to bless in a minyan, which means in the number of 10 people. Even if we are only women, it's good to bless in the number of 10 women. If you go together like a group, okay. you have friends, go together and do the blessing. <laughs> but, but next Monday is... Because the weather is I mean, blessing is good. Because I know you don't know where you have it. Okay, if you, if you don't know, it's the, it, it, at least three. Let me please explain to you. If you don't know Hebrew, but your husband knows or your children know, give them the paper, copy the blessing in English. Instead of Hashem, you say the name of God. And God, you say Elokeinu, you know the, the, the true name, okay? But you say the blessing. Before that, I will give you at least this. You can say ch three chapters of the Tehillim. So I'll give you the chapters before you, can, before you say the blessing, before you say Baruch Atah Hashem, okay? Three chapters of the Tehillim. Chapter Chavtet, which is 29. And then Kuf Chavva, which is 126. And then chapter Kuf Mem Che, 148. Okay? Say the blessing, and at the end of the blessing, I will give you another a chapter of Tehillim to say. You will say at the end, you said then a blessing. Okay? This is the blessing. Say the blessing, and at the end of the blessing, say chapter... Kuf Chav Bet, 122. Okay? If you do not know... What about Hebrew? Sorry? If you do not know Hebrew, at least say this. Okay? If you do not know Hebrew... If you do not know Hebrew, at least say this, okay? 29, 120, 126, 148. It's before the blessing. After the blessing, say 122. Kuf Chaf Bet. Okay? After. After. If you do not know Hebrew, read the Tehillim before, say the blessing, look at the trees. You have to look at the trees while you are saying it. And then finish with the Tehillim chapter 122. Now let's go with the laws of it. We bless this blessing only once a year, okay? Ein levarchim rachazo ela pam achat b'shana, only once a year. Ve'lechatkila ein lakdim bracha lechodesh adara ela yevarech b'chodesh nisan. We are not supposed to say that in the month of Adar. We bless shh, on the month of Nisan. There are some questions about it, I know. If you have, just raise your hand, I will answer the questions. It will be easier. If you already blessed on the month of Adar, anyway you're Yotze, okay? You're not allowed to repeat the blessing on the month of Nisan. I'm giving you the Jewish laws about it. And if you did not bless on the month of Nisan, 
which means you can, you are allowed to bless on Yah, but the best thing is to bless on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, at the beginning of the month of Nisan. That's the best thing. I will explain why we do this blessing. Or Bechodeshim, if you didn't do on Yah, you can bless on Bechodeshim Lachar Miken. If you still found, find trees, trees, fruit trees that still only take out fruit, you know, flowers at the beginning, the, 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 the blossoming, the beginning blossoming of it. Can you say on Saturday? Okay, the, you can say it on Saturday. The only thing, why we do not say, why we prefer not to say it on Saturday, because if there is Irub, you have to have, because then you take the Sidu, you have to have it in front of you. So you have to take it out of your house. Mm -hmm. So you are not, you are not. If you don't have the road, you cannot let I tell. You cannot take things out of your house. Do you understand? And there's another thing that usually they do not. Usually they do not. They say that it's better not to say it on Shabbat. But you can say it on Shabbat if you have the road and you have ten people. You can say it. Just don't touch the trees. God forbid, don't break anything. You just need to look at it and to point at it, okay? Just don't just on Shabbat. Lo, lo. Okay. And it's preferable on Rosh Chodesh, which means Tuesday. Next Tuesday is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It's one day, okay? Rosh Chodesh Nisan is next Tuesday. So it's better on Mamash Rosh Chodesh, on Rosh Chodesh to do that. And, and listen there, and... Like uh, South America, we have countries in South America that the trees blossom in different months. So for example, the trees blossom over there on the month of Tishrei. Then you can make the blessing. Thank you. So you can bless even on Tishrei. It depends on when Hashem gives the, the trees to blossom then. Uh, another thing, azrizim akdimim la mitzvot, which means uh, we should do it earlier. We should do the blessing. Umevarchim brachazo berosh chodesh nisan. It's preferable to bless, like I told you, on rosh chodesh nisan, which is next Tuesday. Bezrat Hashem. Ve'esh noagim itasek berov amu lebarach betzibu, which means it's also preferable that we will go as groups and make the blessing. So if you can, if you are teachers in a school. Or if you have employees and they're all Jewish, you can take them, take them outside, find two trees that start to blossom, two tre uh, 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 fruit trees that start to blossom and make the blessing. And then you get them married to all of them. Oh. And, you, and you should lechaven, letzet yedei chova, letzet, if you can. <laughs> it's another thing. Mutar min adin lebarech birkat ha'ilanot b'shabbat. It, it says you are allowed to bless on Shabbat. Which means the only thing is don't pick, don't you know, don't take uh, leaves from the tree, God forbid, or break the branch or something, or touch it. You just need to look at it, and uh, uh, and of course it has to have you have to have in your area your roof so you can go out of your house, okay, with uh, with a prayer book, with a siddur. Can you say in the night time? No. You need to see it, it's so it's preferable during the... If you can, you can, it's better that you can see it. You have to look at it, and I'll explain why. Yes, you can say it at night, but you have to see it. If there's light all over, you can say it. How we know it's a fruit tree? Explain the meaning of this Just a minute, first we go over the laws, and then I'll explain it. Um, it says, Tov Lebarech. Like I told you, it's better to bless over trees, fruit trees that are outside the city. But if it's a problem, then Bezrat Hashem in your gardens, or you can ask your neighbor. If you see, you can ask someone if this is a fruit tree. If you now can I, ask, you know, I ask you in my time. Maybe we can walk together. I know, like we, we found two trees over there, and there are two trees. Go, yeah, and we can go all of us, like a quick. Glina der Lamelo, ask. Mm -hmm. Be sure that those are two trees. Glina der Bezat Hashem. Then I will say in Hebrew, and we'll be all your tzib. Glina der, Glina der. And we are the Bnei Rosh Chodesh, as and exactly for Pesach, Passover. So Bnei Baruch Hashem, excellent. But ask, let's be sure that those are fruit trees. Last year we prayed there. Okay. But trees that do not have fruit, you're not allowed to bless over them. 
It's only trees that have fruit. We'll explain why. וצריך שיהיו לכל הפחות שני אילנות, ואפילו הם ממין אחד. At least two trees, fruit trees, and it, it's okay if they are from the, the same fruits on those trees, okay? והמברך על ראיית מיני אילנות שונים, הרי זה משובח. Which means if you have two different kinds of fruits on those trees, yeah. it's excellent. זה משובח, it says. אין לברך אלא בשעה שהאילנות מוצאים פרחים. You have to see the beginning of the blossoming, you know, the, the flowers, when they just go out. אבל אם כבר נשו כל פרחי אותם אילנות, אפילו אם עדיין לא גדלו הפירות, אינו מברך עליהם. Which means if all the flowers already went down, even though, you know, it fell, and the fruit did not grow yet, you're not, you're not allowed then to bless. אילנות מורכבים מין ש... If you have, you know what מורכבים אכלה, you took two different fruits and you combined it together and now this is a... כן, היברית, היברית. The hybrid trees are not allowed to bless ברכת האילנות. יש אומרים שאין לברך עליהם ויש אומרים שמותר לברך עליהם. It says that some do say that you can bless on them ולהלכה נראה שנכון יותר שלא לברך. And by law it's, it's more it's proper not to bless over uh, those uh, trees. והרוצה לברך אין למחות בידו, which means if someone doesn't have, he didn't see any, he wants to bless, אין למחות בידו means that he can still bless, but it's better to bless. You're allowed to eat it, but you do not say שהחיינו over that, okay? It says by the Jewish law, most of the poskim say that you're not allowed to say שהחיינו and you're not allowed to say ברכת העילנות, but you do say if you ate them, בורך לי העץ, okay? This is ברכה אחרונה, it's a different thing, okay? איפה זה? מותר לברך על עילנות שהן בתוך שלוש שנים לנטייתן, אף על פי שהן מורלי. You know that the, the trees in Israel, three years. You are not allowed to take, to eat from them. On the fourth, you remember that, that's all lights called. But I gave you a lesson about it. Anyway, in the, in the land of Israel, uh, trees, fruit trees, that are three, that you planted, and the only three years passed, you're still allowed to, to make a blessing. The cut are not over them. Well, but but fruit three trees. Three years or four, five years? I no, but Orla, they are called Orla for three years. Then they have a different definition. But the three years that you're not allowed to take anything from it, This is the time you can, you can still say the blessing of Birkat Elonot over them. Nashim mevarchot Birkat Elonot. Women are, are allowed to say Birkat Elonot. She'ein zo mitzvah she'azman geramah. Benachon lechanech af et haktanim lebarech. Which means, if you are teachers, if you have children, you know, even though they are not 12, the girls are not 12 years old and the boys are not 13, you should take them and make the blessing with them in order to teach them. To bless over the fruit, it's very, very important. וקטן שמגיע למצוות בימי חודש ניסן, נכון שאנתים לברך עד הגיעו למצוות. Which means if, if on Nisan he's going to be 13, so he should wait and get the blessing when he's 13. Then he's really Yotze. Because under that he's not Yotze, he's Yotze if we say that, if an older person say, says that. הסומה בשתי עיניו לא יברך ברכת אילנות. A person who is blind cannot bless Birkat HaElanot ונכון שישמע ברכה because you cannot see, you have to see the, the, the blossom, okay? ונכון שישמע ברכה מאחר ויכוון לצאת ידי חובה which means he has to listen to another person that can see and bless, gives the blessing and then he's Yotze by answering, saying Amen and then, and he מכוון he has to think about the words that he's hearing right now I would like to tell you dear women If you look at Birkat Ha'ilanot, you'll find a few things over there. Wait. Okay, a few things from the Gemara. It says like this, in Gemara Masechet Brachot, about Birkat Ha'ilanot, please, ladies, let's... A person who goes out during the days of Nisan and sees the blossom of fruit trees recites the Birkat Ha'ilanot, I won't say the following blessing, which is Birkat Ha'ilanot, which you have in front of you. Okay? Rashi comments about this. In the days of Nisan, as the winter days have come to pass, so the earth is dry and man sees its full hemorrhage, which means its full blossoming. His mind is distracted and the evil spirit enters into him. And it says, the Midrash says, why does Rashi say that? 
why does Rashi comment about it instead of uh, commenting about the blessing of the Ilanot? He comments about the evil spirit that comes into a person when he sees everything blossoming. So it says, why does he comment like that? Because when everything blossoms and, uh, and the summer comes, you will see that, that when Pesach is over, the first Shabbat after Pesach, our sages say you have to read Masachet Avot. You know the Mishnah Masachet Avot, which is all about moral. Everything in Masachet Avot is how we should behave and how we should be moral. Everything in Masachet, every week we read one of the Masachot. Pirkei Avot. Masachet Avot is Pirkei Avot. It's the same thing. It's in the Mishnah. Every week on Shabbat. And you should do that in your shoes. After Pesach passes, the first Shabbat after Pesach, we start with the first Perek Pirkei Avot. Usually what we do, we sit together, a few women, the men do the same thing, we read it and we speak about it. Every Masechet, each Shabbat until Shabbat comes. And it's, you know, and the Ashkenazi Minhag is to read Masechet Avot to continue that until Tishrei, until the month of Tishrei. So dear women, listen very carefully. Why we need to be more moral? Because then we have, you'll see that people start, it's very, it starts to become hot. Everything is beautiful. We start to take off clothes. Our mind is not really in what we need to think. Exactly. We're not so modest like we, like we are in the winter, because in the winter we have to be modest. But when uh, when summer comes, when spring comes and summer comes, we are not we are not so modest. We say, "Wow, it's too hot!" Wow. So we we give ourselves the shortcut. So God, so it says. As she says, that's why it's a problem. The, and also the air, the air has the smell. You know, the smell all, all over from blossoming. So the evil spirit just goes into you and wants you to do bad things. It's more, <laughs> and during winter, all of us, we go, to, we go to work and then we rush home. It's cold. We don't have even the urge to go outside. But then when summer comes and spring is blossoming and everything, and we, we smell the air, as she says, this is the time that we should be careful. Now, why do we bless the trees? Why don't we, now, nobody asked me over here, why don't we give a blessing over flowers? over animals? Seriously. Why is the trees over grass? Why do we bless the trees? Because the thing that we sinned with, we have to correct it. What did the first human being sin? He sinned with a fruit tree. It's a that, the knowledge tree, that he ate from it. That's why we have to correct that this is what we are part of the first human being, all of us. So we have to correct it. How do we do that? By blessing a fruit tree. At least two fr uh, fruit trees. It's like Adam and Chava, both of them. <laughs> the first human being and his wife Chava. So we have to bless over the fruit tree. It's one of the things that we have to do. Another thing, dear, uh, dear women, it, you know, it, it's like a measure for measure. You know Shimshon uh, Simpson, I think it's called in English? Shimshon, Shimshon, you know, the strong Shimshon that used to fight the Plishtim. Look what happened to him. They took out his eyes. And you will ask, why did they take his eyes? Because he had the big, he had big eyes to look at the non-Jewish women, the girls of the Plishtim. And he married Delilah. He married Lila. And that's why God said, you, you sinned with your eyes. This is what is going to be taken from you. Shalom Adam Yosef, Yosef Yosef Tzadik, the righteous Yosef. He slandered his brothers. He said that they are not behaving nicely to the children of the shpachot, of the maids that Yaakov married. So God made, made him a slave. Look what happened. He said that they are looking at the women of the non-Jewish people. So God made Eshet Potiphar to look at him. Everything is measure for measure. Everything you look for, t for the small details. Yaakov Avinu did not see his father and mother for 22 years. He did not see his son, Yosef, for 22 years. He didn't have kibbud avem, uh, you should, uh, respect your father and mother for 22 years. So the same measure for measure. His son, Yosef, did not see him for 22 years. Everything, if you look very, if you look at every, you'll ask me Noach. Look at Noach. Noach was in the, in the ark. Okay, why was Noach in the ark? Doesn't Hashem have other, other means of uh, salvation to a human being? Why did he put him in the ark? 
because Noah did not approach his people in order to tell them to make tshuva, to do tshuva, to rid them of, over their sins, and he, he was closed in his far mot, in, in the, like in four walls. So God says, because this is what you did, I'm going to save you in four walls, exactly measure for measure, everything that happens, to a human being is measure for measure. It will be true to ourself. You'll see that even in your life, if you look at your life and you will be true to yourself, you will see that truly everything happens measure by measure. Measure for measure. Everything that happens in our lives. In small, but only if we are truly true to ourselves. We, don't, we, we do not color our sins. We, we sit down with Hashem and we do it bodedut. You know what it bodedut is? It's like we sit down and we, we clean our thoughts from all the things that we did in the house and everything and we start thinking, what did we do today? What did we do in the past? And then, just a minute, please. And then, Bezrat Hashem, you find that everything that happens in your life is measure, measure for measure. And if you are lucky, God really gives you measure for measure in order that you will, He will cleanse you from your sins. And then you have Olam Abba, the next world, you understand? So it's a privilege from Hashem. You have a merit from Hashem if you truly have measure for measure. Yes, please. Is it just for the righteous people? Or for no, no, no. God, God gives every person a chance, everyone. It's the Jewish people and also the non-Jewish people. If they, if you just only need to be aware of what's happening around you, you know? Yes. And everybody can see it. Not exactly. Why? Because if you are covered with shells of the evil spirit of sins that you made, and you do not want to see the truth, you know, it does not matter if you do not want to see the truth in this world. It does not matter. Anyway, this is the truth. You understand? Even if you want, if, if you want to believe in a lie, it does not matter. Eventually, God is true. His Torah is true. This is the word of God. This is the word of God that created this world. This is what he says to our people and to all the nations. He said the Jewish people have to, to follow 613 commandments. And the non-Jewish have to follow seven commandments. That's what God decided. Why? Because the Jewish people is my firstborn and the others are the other children. My children, but the other children. It's like the same thing in, the, in a small family. We have the, the firstborn and the other children. And we always expect from our firstborn that he will help us. And he will set an example. You always have different expectations from the first, yes, different expectations from the firstborn and, to the, uh, uh, and the other children. It's in every family. It's, this is the family of Hashem. We are the family of Hashem, and we are His firstborns. That's why you are more harsh with a firstborn. You always say, but I expect you to be a, an example of your sisters and brothers. Do you understand? It's always like this. In every family, it's the same. So this is the family of Hashem. We are the family of Hashem, so we are His firstborns. So God expects us more than others. Because we are his firstborn. When the Mashiach comes, all the nations will know Hashem. All, all, of the, all of the people around the globe, everybody will know Hashem. And everybody will understand that this is his family, the Jewish people are his family. If they want it or they don't want it, we are his firstborns. I'll explain to you. God says, you know, last week, Parashah, we had Parashat Parai, we took out two books of Torah outside. We read from them. Part of it we read Parashat Shmini, and then we read Parashat Para from the, uh, Parashat Chukat, from Chumash Bamidbar. But then there was the Aftara, and the Aftara was from the book of Yechezkel, the prophet Yechezkel. Listen, dear women, just listen to the words of Yechezkel and Abi, the prophet Yechezkel. I will translate, I have, I'll read it in Hebrew, and I will translate for you uh, sentence by sentence. I just want you to catch what Hashem is telling us. It says, Ma? Sefer Cheskel Perek Lamed Vav, 36. The chapter is 36. It's a, it starts in, on Ted Zayn, okay, it's 16. Okay, but I'm reading from Chafbet now, okay? God says that He spread us in exile between the nations. And He expected us to do a tikkun, to fix ourselves, to cleanse ourselves in order that the third temple will be built already. But then he says that, God forbid, we did not do what he expected us to do, and, we, and we, not only we did not do that, we imitated the going. 
We imitated the non-Jews instead of keeping our religion and instead of doing the commandments that God told us to do. So God says, So tell the children of Israel, I will do it for my sake, says God, not for your sake, because I spread you between the nations and you did not do what I commanded you to do. And then he says, I will sanctify my name, that you caused not to be sanctified among the non-Jewish people. And he says, God, and the Goim and all the nations will know that I am God. I will make you, I will sanctify you, I will cleanse you, and all of the nations will know that I am Hashem, your God. And I will take you from the nations. And I will gather you from all the lands that you are in. And I will bring you back to your land, the land of Israel. And I will throw upon you holy water. And those holy water will be the water of the red cow. You're the red cow that we put in, in holy water, in water of spring, you know, spring that comes from the earth. You know, that it's, those are the, ash, um, the ashes of red cow that is spread into, into, that is put into, inside the holy waters that come from a spring. And I will make your heart a new one, I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit. And I will take your heart of stone that you have now. Why, why does he say the prophet heart of stone? Because the evil spirit is compared to a stone. Because if you knock on the stone, it is not here. So your heart is not here. I knock on it and I try to tell you to do tshuva. I show you what happens to the nation. I, look what I did with nature. Look what I did in Japan. Look what I did all around the globe. Look what happens in, in France to Jewish people. Look what happens in Israel. Look what happens now in Holland. He says, I am knocking on your door, but you did not wake up. Your, your heart is like a stone, he says. So I will change this heart of stone and I will give you leg basar. I will give you a, 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 a heart of flesh I will give you. So you can feel me inside you. You'll feel every part because I am I put part of myself inside of you. And you do not know how to appreciate it. It's you know it's even absurd even to think about it. God put part of him inside of us and we do not want to appreciate it. We prefer to appreciate what we see around us. And what we see around us it's only the physical world. We did not look at the spiritual world. And he says, God, and I will put my spirit inside of you. And then you will follow all my laws and you will keep them. And you will sit in the land of Israel which I gave your forefathers. It's a promise. Nobody can take it. This is a promise of the, of the one and the only one that created the world. It's his promise to the forefathers. He said this is the land uh, that is going to be for the children of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Nobody can take it. This is, we cannot give it away because it's not ours to give. We, God decided this is yours and you cannot give it. This is mine. The whole world is mine. You will ask me why, you know, the month of Nisan is the first month of the months, Rosh Hashim, it's the head of the months, and Tishrei, and the month of Tishrei is the first mm -hmm. month of the year, the Jewish year, and you will ask me why wasn't the month of Nisan the first month, and I will tell, explain to you because it says in the Midrash that God said if I will start, if they will start, the sages said if God so, sorry said if I will start with the month of Nisan and I will start with the first of the, with the first commandment that the Jewish people as a whole people received, which means which means this month is going to be the head of the month. It's, this is the first mitzvah that all of the children of Israel received as a whole, as one. 
as a people. So it says, God says, then the nations will come and say, why did you give the children of Israel the land of Israel? So God started with Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shamayim ve'et ha-aretz. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, which means if the nations were lost, why did you give the land of Israel to the Jewish people? God has an answer to them because I created the whole world. It is mine, and it is mine to give or to take away. It's not anyone's else. We are only part, you know, we have God put us, you know, part of him, his breath, part of him inside of each and every one. We are not the rulers. He is the ruler. We are not the ones that own everything. We just think, you know, it's the, it's the illusion that the evil spirit lets us think. Wow, we have a house, it's ours. Nothing is ours. But once we pass away, the house stays there. We are not there anymore. Uh, the the um, uh, you know, the library is there, we're not there. The beautiful car is there, but we're not there. The beautiful clothing is there, but we're not there anymore. We are just travelers for a certain t amount of time. That's it, we need to remember that. So we came in order to do our best, in order to receive the next world, and in order to, get, to gain merit for our children, our grandchildren, and the whole world, not only us, but also the nations, once we do a good deed, we give this merit, this privilege to the whole world, not only to us. They understand? They all merit, but if God forbid we do the opposite thing, we sin, the whole world loses because of us. Do you understand? So it, it depends on how we, 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 uh, we accept the concept of what's going on in the world, the knowledge of that, that understanding, that when we walk, Hashem walks with us. When we speak, Hashem is over there listening. Because up in Kaspatua, the book is open, and there's Yad Roshem and there's a hand writing everything that we do every minute. Don't fool yourselves. Everything is written. Remember what I told you today. Everything that we do. So God says that He's going to give. That He's going to give us the land that He gave to our forefathers. And you're going to be my people, and I'm going to be your God. <coughs> and I will cleanse you from all of your sins. And you won't know what hunger is. You won't be uh, hungry anymore. You will have enough food, he says. And I will announce to you that you'll have a lot of fruit trees and you'll have a lot of vegetables. So you won't be ashamed among the nations. And you will remember all the bad things that you did, that you did not listen to me. And you will feel ashamed. I don't do that for you, he says. You should be ashamed, he says. You should feel ashamed. From the things that you do, the children of Israel. The day that I'm going to cleanse you from all of your sins, I will bring you back to all of your cities. And I will see that they will blossom, all the cities in the land of Israel, he says. And this land will flourish. And it will look like paradise, the land of Israel. Everyone will say it's paradise. Which means you'll, you'll feel very safe in those, in those cities. And all of the non-Jewish people will know that I am God that built everything, that I am responsible for everything. Which means I am God, I said and I did everything that I said. So God says, I will make you plenty, I will make a lot of you, you will um, you will multiply, you will multiply. God says, I will make you a lot, your numbers are going to be just like God promised. 
like the stars in heaven and like a far aladama, like the uh, sand on the ground, dear women. Ketzon Kedoshim, you will be a holy sheep. Ketzon Yerushalayim b'mo'adei akentia nearim achavrot meleot son adam ve'edukia ni Hashem. God will fulfill all of His promises. And Bezrat Hashem, we should help Him fulfill it. In order that, God forbid, we won't fall in, I told you, in times of judgment, God forbid. So we can do it with mercy. Mashiach can come. Mashiach is already here. We just need to wake up. You know, we are all asleep. We need to wake up, Bezrat Hashem. And then, Bezrat Hashem, everything will be okay. Ah, the Chumash. בסוף החומש יש את ההפטרה. כן, זו ההפטרה שלה. Dear women, another thing, why do we say ברכת האילנות? So I would like to tell you, please listen, it's very important. You said it. No, it's not enough, that's only one, I'm explaining to you. Dear women, listen, by the Zohar HaKadosh. You know, I already told you that there's reincarnation also in plants. So what we do when we do Birkata and when we mechavnim, when we concentrate, in order to have the merit, listen very carefully. Look what the blessing is. כתוב, ויעלה לפניך השם אלוקינו בלי אבותינו, כאילו קיבלנו בכל הכוונות הראות לכוון בברכה הזאת בסודותיה, and all that we need, that we concentrated on all the secrets of this blessing. And what are the secrets? ותהיה חשובה ומקובלת ומרוצה לפניך ברכה זו, you will accept and have the merit of our blessing, לברר ולהעלות על ידה כל ניצוצי קדושה המעורבים בצומח, which means all of the souls that were recall, had recornation in those trees will go back to the right places it should be. So we are helping them, do you understand? We are helping them to go to do the, the fixing in this world by saying the, reciting the blessing. You understand the meaning of it? It's more, it's like the meaning of the secrets of the blessing. We are reciting in order to, have, to help have the merit for those souls that are captured. They did not, they, instead of going to the throne of Hashem, under the throne, they are still in the passage. So we are helping them to go out of it by the blessing, by the blessing that we are saying. וכל הנפשות, רוחות ונשמות המגולגלות בו, they are recornated inside the plant, inside that fruit tree. ואתה אל במיטה תוכה וחסדך הגדול, תאיר להם ברוב פניך ותשלים ברורם ותיקונם. And God, because of our blessing, you will help them to have the merit so they can finish their fixing in this world. You know what the schot it is? All of this is written for you in the book. But Sefer HaEmet is the book of truth in heaven. Everything that you helped others, not for your sake, for their sake, <coughs> is written. <laughs> so dear women, we need to recite the blessing, and if you can with the Yehirat Son, you should recite it with the Yehirat Son. But Bli Neder, maybe we'll do that next week together, Bezrat Hashem. It will be Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Bli Neder, Bezrat Hashem. Dear women, let's continue. I know it's late, but wait. Wait, wait, I'll explain everything in time. Better shall explain it. It's part of my... Okay, so we spoke about Birkat Eilanot. I told you we did not say Tachanun. Now let's go to Ma'ot Chitin. Ma'ot Chitin is the money that we give in, uh, for the Matzot, for Pesach. At the beginning of uh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, we give money in order... It's not regular charity money. It's called Ma'ot Chitin Bekimcha de Pischa, which means flower for Pesach. Flower which you, you, you make a Matzot from it. Why? Because for, so no poor person will sit down on Passover without matzot. So usually we give it to the rabbi of the shul. We give it to you, you know, there's a big box to give money that they will collect the money for so they can buy matzot to all the people, the Jewish people that cannot celebrate Pesach with matzot because they do not have money. You understand? So this is called, this is one of also. One of the things that we do on the month of Nisan before Passover. Even the poor people. The ones that do not have enough money should give something for Ma'ot Chitin. It's a, a big Where? mitzvah, a big, to, to the shul, to the rabbi. It's called Ma'ot Chitin. It's called Ma'ot Chitin. Ma'ot is money, okay? Chitin is a, is a flower. Kimcha de Pischa it's called. 
And then the last thing is, listen very carefully, dear women. During the month of Adar, uh, sorry, during the month of Nisan, every day of Nisan, we read from Bamidbar, Parashat Neso, you have it in the, part of the Sidurim do have it inside. In the, in, the, in the portion that is called Neso, in Chumash Bamidbar, you will see after Birkat Abkon, in the triple blessing of the Kohanim, you'll see over there, you have the presence that each president of each tribe brought every day to the Mishkan, okay? They brought each one, they brought a presence. Every day, listen very carefully, you should read the part. For example, the first day, you take over here, I'll give you an example. Just a minute, please. Yes, 12 days, I'll explain everything. Well, I'll write it on the board also. Okay, the first, it says, for the first day, it's written, The first one is the president of Yehuda, the tribe of Yehuda. So you read all of it, everything that he gave, this is for the first day. The second day of Nisan, you read the, the second uh, president that came, it's written in, in the Chumash. The second day is the president of the tribe of Issachar, so you read that, that part. I'll explain why it's important. All 12 days, from the first day of Nisan till the 12th of Nisan, you should read each one of them. Why is it so important? Listen very carefully, dear women. Each day is, is a parallel to each month of the year. Once you read it, then you should ask blessings in Parnassah, in income, in, in health, everything for yourself and for the whole children of Israel. Listen very carefully. And then what it says in the holy books, that when you do that, Rabbi Nachman verse in Likutei Moharan says that when you do that, it's a beautiful thing, when you do that, God sees to it that that month, when, once it comes, you are protecting that month. Every day I will explain to you is against one of the months. It's parallel to one of the months of the year. The first day, which is the first of Nisan, Echad Nisan, okay? This is one of Nisan, one, okay? This is Nisan. The first day, let's write over here. The first day of Nisan, Aleph Nisan, is parallel to the month of Nisan itself, okay? The second day is Nisan. The parallel to the month of Iyav, Nisan, Nisan Iyav. And the third one, etc., etc., until you come to the twelfth. The twelfth one is Adar. But on a leap year, we have two Adarim. So this is for Adar Aleph, and the third one, you'll see Yud Gimel, is for Adar Bet. We finish Adar Bet. You want me to write you the months? No, no, no. no. Okay. Each one is for one of the months. You'll see that the third one is Adar. And then we have on the 13th day, it's for Adar Bet. It's, it's the ending of, the, you see, the, the last president on the 12th, on the 12th day is Beyom Shnema Sar, Yom Nasi Libnei Naftali, it's from the tribe of Naftali, the president of Naftali. And then you have Vaydaber Hashem El Moshe, this is the 13th day. Daber El Aaron, Vamar Talab Baalotcha Et Hanerot, we speak about the menorah. Okay, that's the 13th day, and this is for Adar Bet. That's the 13th day, okay? That's what you read out of Chumash Bamidbar Parashat Neso. And you will see the 14th day is already Pesach. So you should concentrate, Be'ezrat Hashem, that each one of them, you should concentrate on each one of the months, of the Hebrew months, and then ask blessings, not only for yourself, but for all the children of Israel. Ask Hashem that He will give, bring Mashiach with mercy. Yes. No, then it's Pesach, it's Passover. 13th. 13th day is the menorah, you'll see. It's the part of the, you'll see the 12th, you'll see the 12th president, okay, which is from the tribe of Naphtali. And then the 13th, you'll read the part of the menorah, okay? That's, that's for Adar Bet. It's in Parashat Neso, in the portion that is called Neso, in Chumash, ba, yes, in Chumash Bamidbar. You open, it's exactly after the triple blessing of the Kohanim, Birka. The Kata Kohanim, exactly after that you can see that, yes. Basically, do you give 
if the 13, 13 months, if it correlates to the 13 attributes of Hashem? Can everything better? It's we have two thirteen uh, uh, measures of Hashem. We have one that Moshe Rabbeinu kibel and one that Micha Navi kibel, the prophet. Yes. I understand curious, like uh, God did not like like uh, sacrifices to in like a price. Why like we supposed to eat this? He does like it. He says, like, they're supposed to come first, they're supposed to bring first, and they just were, like, last... Better he liked it. It says, the Midrash asks, why did he... Uh, everybody brought the same thing. So why did he... It's not enough to say that all of the presidents of all the tribes came in on the first day and brought the same sacrifices, the same pres presents. Is that enough to say that? But instead, God said, no, I want you to write each one, each one will come on a different day and bring his presents. Why? Because this is a karate top appreciation. God was happy that each one of them brought in the presents and each one would have had a different meaning to the presents that he brought in order to glorify the name of God. Because they were sorry that they did not bring in the beginning presents to Hashem to help build the Mishkan. So that's why God said, but they want to, but he saw that the will that they wanted to, so he said, let them and write each one of them a different day because this is a karate poem. This is to know how to appreciate. God teaches us. From this we must learn that even if a, a, a simple person does a, a good kind thing to you, you should appreciate that. You should have a karate talk. If God appreciated what the president he does not need it. But he appreciated it. And they brought exactly the same thing. And still, he took the time, he told Moshe to write it, and the ink, and the paper, in order to write it, the letter in order to write it, because God said, I want you to learn how to appreciate. God appreciates what the sand did to Moshe Rabbeinu. He did not allow him, while, while he had to, to kick with a, the mate, with, a, with a stick, on the sand, he said, you are not allowed to do that because the sand saved you. When the sand covered the Egyptian that you killed, the sand, sand saved you, so you have to have appreciation even to the sand. The water, the Nile, he did not let you, he told him, give it to your uh, own, your brother. You are not allowed to take the matan to kick uh, the water because they saved you when you were in a, in a box on the, on the Nile. So God teaches us from his measures. He said, this is a karate talk, even to a thing that does not move, that is not, is not considered a living thing. Still, God says you have to have a karate talk. So God teaches us from his measures. As alachat kama vechama, it's more than a human being does something nice towards you. You understand? So it's very important. And more than that, when you read about the 12 presidents that gave from each tribe the presents, it says that we need to learn from that how to appreciate all of the tzaddikim, all of the righteous people. And it is not matter if you are chassid from uh, Gur or Hasid uh, Chabad or Hasid Satmer, it does not matter from where you come from. You should love all of the tzaddikim. And why? And why you should do that? Because those 12 tribes, it's written in the Midrash, those 12 presidents, each, nobody asked me, there was the well of Miriam, but there were so many Jewish people. So everybody came to take water from the well. It's, it's not even, you cannot do that. You've thought about it once. All, millions, they will come and just pour water from one well. You know, it, it will take months until everybody has water, and only for one day. So there will be a problem. But it says that they had, took a stick, and they made a line from the well to their tribe. And the well took water from, from the well, went water, through the line, so each person, they did not even have to make any effort. They just went out of their tent and they had water. Look how beautiful this. But the inner meaning of this, the secrets of this, the beautiful thing that you have in this, is this, that it means that each tribe took from which well? From the well of wisdom of Hashem. The, it's not only the wisdom and understanding, but knowing Hashem. Each tribe, took each president of that tribe was like a tube of that, of knowledge from Hashem exactly to his tribe. It says that Rizal Shutat Aganano says that there were that in heaven there are twelve lines, twelve places that they're worshipping Hashem, twelve places in for the twelve Midrut, for the twelve tribes. And God accepts even because each one of us works God a little bit differently. 
We understand? Each one of us, each zerem, uh, each stream in the Jewish religion works Hashem a little bit differently. One is a chared, one is a chassid. It's a little bit, but all of us are worshiping Hashem. All of us love Hashem. We just have, a, you know, a small nuance in that we che- that we have in our way that we worship Hashem, and all of this is accepted by Hashem. Yes. But because of this, like tribes, like chiefs, were like, like we seen and we stuck for forty years and we stuck here too. Because they so, betray, like, you know, they, they just bring, like, whatever. And, like, be, because that's exactly, we, we need, need to, to pray for these people. So we need to pray for, to Hashem that God will cause, will help us love each other. Unconditional love. You should love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Not that if you don't want something to be done to you, don't do it to others. Don't slander God forbid others. And by slandering Sadiqim, you're slandering others. If you know, young people, you cannot ask forgiveness from a whole group of people if you spoke badly about them. The, you know, the most uh, biggest tikkun in this world now is our mouth. This is the most biggest tikkun that we need to do, is our mouth. You see that, that we even uh, we decide when is Rosh Chodesh by our mouth. How do we know when there's Rosh Chodesh? We bring, there are, there are witnesses that see that the moon is almost nothing, and they say this is, this is the, the state of the moon, now it's Rosh Chodesh. So by the mouth, by testifying, this is the mouth, we decide that this is Rosh Chodesh. So the, our tikkun, our fixing is the mouth. I will end with one thing, I will want to end with one thing. The month of uh, Nisan has different names. It's called the month of, uh, month of Nisan. It's called Chodesh Aviv, and it's also called Rosh Chodashim. But we have in the month of Nisan, okay, this is in the month of Nisan. Aviv, if you look, this is the, Aviv in Hebrew is spring. If I'll take this word and I'll divide it to two, it's Av, Yud Bet which means it's the father of all 12 months. Because Yud is 10, and Bet is 2, and together it's 12. So it's the father of all 12, look how beautiful it is. The, the head of the month, Ken. Uh, you started to say before that Tishrei is actually the first month of the year. Of the year, be decided by our sages, and God said Rosh HaChodashim is Nisan. The count so is by Nisan. It's almost the same. Rosh HaChodashim is the ahead of all the month and the... And then our sages decided, we'll speak about I spoke already about it. I gave you a lecture about it. Why was decided that Tishrei is the, the first month of the year and not Nisan? But anyway, listen, I'll continue now. Please look, there are a lot of lectures that we already have on the net and I, I won't go into it now, Bezrat Hashem, but I will give you again the explanation. So this is Aviv, Av Yud Bet Chodashim, the, the head, the father of all 12 months. Look how beautiful it is. 12 months, and Nisan is also, if you look at the word Nisan, you saw uh, Rabbi Chaim Yosef Sharabi gave me an enlightenment. He says Nisan is also the name of God. It's also the name of God. Because look, Nun is 50, Yud is 10, Samech is 60, and Nun is also 50. If we'll take off the tens, the zeros, we'll have five, one, six, and, uh, and five. So let's look. Five is hey, okay? Another five is hey. You see five, five. Six is vav. I don't want to write the name, so if you add it together, it's yud, k, vav, k. It's the same thing, but it's more than that. Nisan is the name of God, the Kedusha. The Kedusha is everything that we have in tens. Nisan, if you take, Nun is 50. Oh, I wrote it over here. So let's add it. 50 plus 10 is 60. Plus 60 is 120. Plus 50 is 170. 170 is 17 multiplied by 10. 17 is the name of God, one of the names of God, which is Aleph, Kuf, Vav, Kuf, the name of knowing. Shema Da'at, it's called. Shema Da'at. Instead of Kuf, you know it's Hey. Aleph is one. Hey here is five. Vav is six. Another five. Together it's 17. It's the name. Eta Aretz Veta Shamaim. It's the name of God of Da'at. Shema Da'at. 
What is Eta, 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 Eta